While most of the world was celebrating the arrival of 2026 with fireworks and champagne, something far more powerful was happening on the slopes of Mount Etna in Sicily. Exactly at midnight on January 1st, thermal sensors on satellites hundreds of kilometers above detected something unusual. Heat anomalies were emerging in a specific region of Europe's most active volcano. And look, when I say specific, I'm talking about a place with history. The area near Monte Simone, an ancient cone that witnessed a historic eruption between 1811 and 1812, was coming back to life. Nobody at the volcano's base saw anything initially because dense cloud cover completely hid Etna's eastern flank. It was a silent, almost secret eruption that began without the typical visual spectacle of major explosive eruptions. But when the sun rose that New Year's morning and satellite images started arriving, volcanologists realized they were witnessing something spectacular. A new eruptive fissure had opened at approximately 2,100 meters altitude, right in the heart of the Valle del Bove. And from it began gushing incandescent lava that would quickly form rivers of fire flowing down the slope. You know who was one of the first people to notice what was happening? Dr. Boris Benk, a volcanologist at the National Institute of Geophysics and Volcanology, the INGV in Catania. Man, this is the type of scientist who literally never takes his eyes off Etna. On the morning of the 1st, he began analyzing images arriving from the Sentinel-2 satellite and, wow, can you imagine his surprise? There, clearly visible in thermal imagery, was a new lava flow forming in the upper Valle del Bove, just below the Saracoso Ridge. And you know what else impressed him? The exact location. The fissure had opened right at the foot of Monte Simone, and any volcanologist who knows Etna's history knows that this specific cone is like, how can I explain? It's a living witness to past eruptions. So when new activity emerges exactly there, it's impossible not to think about the volcano's historical patterns. Dr. Benka immediately shared the information on his social media because he understands the importance of keeping people informed with real data without alarmism. And look, this is fundamental when you're dealing with a volcano that has millions of people living in its vicinity. Now, let me tell you what this eruption looks like when you see it up close. Imagine rivers of incandescent lava glowing in intense orange and red tones, flowing slowly but relentlessly through the desert landscape of the Valle del Bove. Viewed from below, from Etna's eastern flank, the lava appears to be incredibly close to the villages at the volcano's base, especially Milo and Fernazzo. It's like that optical illusion when you look at the full moon on the horizon and it seems gigantic, you know? The same thing happens here. The perspective makes it seem like the lava is almost knocking on houses' doors, creating those dramatic images that invariably end up in newspaper headlines. But here's an important spoiler before you start worrying too much. The actual distances are much greater than the view suggests. Several hundred vertical meters separate the lava flows from inhabited areas, and the region's topography means the lava would have to overcome significant obstacles to get near the villages. Is it visually spectacular? Absolutely. Is it an immediate threat? Fortunately not. And here are the numbers that really matter, based on official INGV data released on January 2nd. The most advanced front of the lava flow is approximately 5 kilometers away from Fernazzo and 5.5 kilometers from Milo. It might not seem like much when you think in terms of distance a car travels in a few minutes, but for a lava flow that has already traveled a good part of the way upslope, these are distances that will hardly be overcome, especially considering the flow is confined within the Valle del Bove. The lava front reached an altitude of 1,420 meters above sea level, descending from the eruptive fissure that's around 2,100 meters. The lava field has already extended for approximately 2.8 kilometers, according to the observatory's most recent measurements. And you know what's most reassuring? The volcano's seismic tremor is within the normal medium range. There are no signs that the activity will intensify dramatically in the coming hours or days. But before continuing, you need to understand what exactly this Valle del Bove is that I keep mentioning, because it's absolutely central to understanding why this eruption, despite being spectacular, doesn't represent an immediate threat. The Valle del Bove is a giant depression on Etna's eastern flank, measuring approximately 5 by 10 kilometers. It was formed thousands of years ago by a catastrophic collapse of the volcano's slope, an event similar to what happened at Mount St. Helens in the United States in 1980, only on a much larger scale. What remained was this deep valley with steep walls that exposed layer upon layer of ancient lavas, 
creating an incredible geological record of Etna's eruptive history. But here's the most important part. This valley is completely uninhabited. It's a volcanic desert where absolutely nobody lives. So when a lateral eruption like this happens and lava flows into the Valle del Bove, it's basically flowing into a natural containment zone. The technical data from this eruption is fascinating when you look closely. The fissure that opened isn't a single point, but rather a fracture with multiple eruptive vents, meaning several small points along a line from which lava is gushing. Wait, let me rephrase that better. Imagine a crack in the earth, except that instead of just showing the interior, it's literally vomiting incandescent lava at various points along its length. Some of these vents are producing more vigorous flows, others less so, but all contribute to feeding the lava field that's developing. The maximum extent measured by the Etna Observatory reached 2.8 kilometers, but it's important to understand this doesn't mean a straight line. The flow winds through the Valle del Bove's topography, following natural terrain depressions, circumventing obstacles, sometimes dividing into multiple arms that later reunite. The most advanced front is located east of the rocky promontory known as Roca Musara, which is like a landmark in the region. The lava has already descended from 2,100 meters to 1,420 meters, losing almost 700 meters in altitude along this route. Now, about Monte Simone specifically, man, when I discovered this part of the story, I was genuinely impressed by how geology repeats itself. Monte Simone is an adventitious cone, which is basically a smaller volcanic cone that forms on the slope of a larger volcano. It's a witness to an eruption that happened over 200 years ago, between 1811 and 1812. Back then, lava gushed from exactly the same region, shaping the landscape we see today. And now, in 2026, history repeats itself almost at the exact same location. This isn't coincidence, it's geology. Magma follows preferential paths through the Earth's crust, taking advantage of zones of weakness that already exist. When an eruption happens, it may seal some of these fissures, but it can also create new zones of weakness that will be exploited in future eruptions. It's a cycle that repeats over centuries and millennia. The fact that the new fissure opened so close to the historic Monte Simone suggests there's a deep structure there, perhaps an ancient magma dike that remains active, channeling material from the deep magmatic reservoir to the surface. And look at the technology being used to monitor all of this in real time. It's impressive. The satellites that first detected the eruption include thermal sensors that can measure temperature differences of fractions of a degree even from space. The Sentinel-2 from the European Space Agency captured high-resolution images clearly showing the lava flow emerging from the lateral fissure. These images aren't just beautiful, they're crucial scientific data that allow volcanologists to measure the effusion rate, estimate the volume of lava being produced, and project where the flow might move in the coming hours and days. 